Here's another printer I bought for myself for the sake of having hands-on with it, so at least I have a solid point of reference for future printer reviews. And whilst many people out there will probably be looking at the A1 as the starter printer and the X1 Carbon as the elite printer, I worry that the P1S gets ignored by more people than it should be, because for most people, this is quite easily the best all-round choice amongst the whole bamboo range. Let me show you why I think this is. Hi, I'm Ross, and this is Firehammer Videos. Let me get it out of the way first. The P1S and the P1P are exactly the same printer in terms of base hardware functionality. And other than a flying overview, I'm not covering that again in this video. So if you haven't already watched my P1P video, I suggest you go back and watch that first. The highlights are that this is a Core XY bamboo printer with a build volume of 256 mm cubed. And I specifically called out that this is a bamboo printer because if you're like me and just want to focus on printing things rather than spending forever learning how a printer works and configuring it, Bamboo are in a class of their own. Aside the A1 Mini, this is currently the standard build size on Bamboo printers, at least until they give us the bigger one that we all want. It'll come, I'm sure, but when that is, is anyone's guess. This is a slightly faster printer than the A1 series, due to it being a Core XY with no horizontal bed movement. Prints are kept a little more stable during printing which should lead to fewer failures, or at least slightly faster prints, thanks to the improved stability. But bear in mind I said should and slightly faster. It's not a huge difference, but it's a difference. The main benefit I have with it is that it's just much tidier to have everything within this body style and that I don't need to have clearance behind the printer on my desktop for it to print. Like the P1, this also has a built-in light and camera and it'll capture time lapses throughout your printing process along with allowing you to remotely access to view prints live should you want to check on them from a different room. It's not the smoothest live video but you can at least detect obvious failures. And this is a bamboo printer, so just like all others, bamboo will hold your hand from the second you open the box to your first print. Just scan the QR code, watch the unboxing video as you perform the same steps, boot it up, let the printer calibrate itself, and choose from one of the many internal files just to get you started. Now the website claims 15 minutes setup, and now that I've done one, I'm confident I could do the next one in about that much time, AMS and all. But going in blind as I did, and as you likely will, I'd give yourself a good 30 minutes to an hour from cutting the box open to starting your first print. And I got the combo unit, which comes with one AMS module. This set comes with about 200 grams of bamboo filament, along with a small amount of support for PLA. And I really should try a print using support material at some point. I've just never gotten round to it. The whole point of this is it doesn't stick as much as PLA sticks to PLA. Anyway, thanks to this out-of-box approach, along with the filament provided, Bamboo have nailed it when it comes to first impressions. Gone are the days of what the f*** am I doing wrong just to get something to stick to the build plate. If you don't have a successful print out of the box with a Bamboo printer, then you probably ignored one or more of the setup steps, or unfortunately, you may have a faulty printer. Thankfully, though, if it's the latter, the printer will most likely tell you what the issue is and it'll direct you to a page with a guide on how to resolve that issue. If you bought a printer from another brand, it would be a case of going to a Facebook or Reddit page for that brand and describe the issue as best you can and hope for a response. And again, it's about how you've communicated your issue and you may not even know the correct words or terms for a particular problem. Now, when it comes to differences between the P1P and the P1S, the most obvious one is the chassis. The P1S is mostly an enclosed version of the P1P. In fact, you can pretty much turn any P1P into a P1S by purchasing the P1P enclosure kit. The only difference I can see between the P1P and the P1S is that if you add this kit to the P1P, is that the activated carbon filter is a separate item. While the P1S comes with it, this is a separate optional purchase for some reason. But this kit gives you the plastic side panels, a cable chain, the glass door and lid, along with internal fans for part cooling and control board cooling, and a chamber temperature regulator fan too. So with all that, what's the actual benefit of the P1S over the P1P? Well, honestly, it's the temperature regulation and part cooling, but that's about it. 
Part cooling should help a bit when bridging materials as it cools and goes rigid in the air rather than drooping. And for temperature regulation, when printing with PLA, which is typically 3D printing in easy mode, you need to take the glass lid off the printer in order to keep the printing environment a bit cooler. And that's because PLA melts under cooler temperatures than most other filament materials. The benefit of an enclosed printer is for those of you who want the option of printing stronger materials like ABS or ASA. These materials can be a pain in the arse to print with, and honestly, for most applications, I use printer for nice models, or the few functional parts I've made like storage cases, PLA is more than enough. ABS can be a nightmare because just the slightest temperature change can completely ruin a print. So an unenclosed printer like the P1P could struggle with these materials because the slightest breeze just as you walk past it can be a problem. The P1S or a P1P upgraded to the P1S keeps the printing environment temperature regulated by using the fan to vent the chamber as it starts to get too hot. So the question is, do you need the P1S over the P1P if you never have plans to print with ABS or anything of the like? Well, honestly, the main reason for me, or at least how I justified it to myself, is that I don't know what the future will bring. Just because I'm not printing with ABS or ASA now doesn't mean I won't want to in the future. Maybe I'll print some garden ornaments. And considering ASA is designed to be like ABS, but with much more UV resistance, that'll be a good choice for then if it ever comes. But honestly, I just think it looks like a neater and more complete product, and having the enclosure is just a little bit more secure in that I'm not worried my kids are going to stick their hands inside the unit when it's on and it's hot. But really, the main feature of the P1 and X1 range are the AMS units. I bought this P1S as a combo kit, which means that you get an AMS unit in the set and this comes packaged inside the printer. Bamboo actually have different setup video guides for the printers with and without AMS units, but the QR code on the box will show you the right one. The AMS unit sits neatly on top of the printer and you can cable it into the filament buffer on the back and then you cable that box to another port on the printer itself. And you can connect up to four AMS units to any current P1 or X1, but to do this, you need to buy three more AMS units and the separate four feed AMS hub too. Whilst each AMS unit has its own PTFE tube to feed filament into the hub, only one unit has a data cable connected. The rest are daisy chained to each other. And I must say, I love the AMS units. Yes, when changing colours there is a bit of waste, and when it does this it drops the purged filament out the back of the printer, which is why the first thing I printed was a poopy shoe for the back. But to help save wasted filament, I've actually done some investigation and made a couple of shorts on how you can save a ton of this waste and really cut it down to a minimum. I'll link to the first of the three short videos in the description below, and you can get an instant win with your AMS by watching them. Now where these are better than the AMS light units is once again that, well, these are enclosed. One of the worst things you can do to any filament is leave it out in the open where it can absorb moisture. And with the AMS light units, you don't really have much of a choice. Now, when I first started FDM printing, I honestly couldn't believe that plastics can absorb moisture until I started doing this. But moist filament can lead to anything from blobs in your print as it builds up and flash boils in the hot end to making your filament brittle and snap before it even gets into the PTFE tube. And whilst these enclosed AMS units have no heating element inside them to bake off the moisture, there are two recesses at the back where you get two desiccant bags and that's to help stave off moisture buildup. But the better option is printing yourself some AMS dry boxes and filling them with some reusable desiccant. I actually printed these ones on my P1P and there are a ton of different designs out there. I just like these as it let me fill the whole space of the AMS and there was a matching design which allowed me to fit a cheap hydrometer in the middle so that I can actually monitor it. And anything below 20% moisture is normally fine but I've been able to get mine down to 10% and it's still there. And the good thing about these desiccant beads is they turn green as moisture is absorbed and it explains on the back of the bottle how to put them in the microwave or oven when you need to reactivate them and reuse them. Just make sure you first remove them from the printed dry box because that's obviously going to melt in the oven. But the best feature of the AMS units for me though is that changing a reel of filament is little more than pushing the end of a different reel into the hole in the AMS unit. Now without this, you need to heat up the hot end, extract the old reel, keep it hot, manually purge the new reel through, and that wastes about as much as the AMS units will do during a colour change. 
but that manual process alone is often for me enough of a barrier to entry that I can totally avoid with an AMS unit, which means I'm more likely to be getting on with my next print than procrastinating over the effort of a real change. And so far, I've spent most of my time with this printer printing upgrades for my various other bamboo printers. I printed a nice little box for the swatches that I got with my A1 and A1 Mini, and I love this. It's just, it's super neat and tidy and even has the bamboo logo embedded within the box. And that's thanks to the AMS unit's multicolor option. And I also printed another box to hold all my bamboo extras in. Again, this is logoed and the hinges are in bamboo green. Unfortunately though, the hinges for this type of box are just, well, they're awful and they just don't work at all. In fact, I've honestly no idea why so many storage box designs online are remixes of this style of container because the hinges on the little filament box are just so much better. But then I continued printing more random things that were on the internal memory card of the printer that I hadn't printed already on my A1s or my P1P or my X1, mostly stuff that has multiple colours. And that's things like this diameter measuring tool and some Bamboo Lab badges and a Bamboo Lab scraper. And it's worth noting that the blades for this scraper come in the box with the printer. So it's kind of a necessary print. And I also printed something called a Bamboo Lab sticker applicator, and I have got no idea what this is or what it does, so if you can enlighten me, please pop a comment below the video. Now I did say in my P1P video that one of the small issues I had with these printers, unlike the A1 or the X1 range, is that due to the small monochrome display, you couldn't actually see what any of these included models looked like before you printed them. But it turns out there's actually a full page on the Bamboo Wiki which shows them all anyway. And when I think back, of course there is. This is Bamboo, and they do sensible things to make it easier for us, the user. So of course they already had a solution to the tiny, arguably irrelevant to most people issue that I noticed in that review. So here's the thing. I guess 90% of the people out there probably don't need this much printer. You get the same build area and the same user experience, arguably better, with the likes of the A1. So where the P1 series shines to me in terms of functionality for someone who just wants their printer to work is more about the ability to upgrade it and add up to four enclosed AMS units and print with up to 16 colors continuously. And I love that it's a modular process to go on this journey from the P1 to the P1S to then the having the AMS upgrades. You can, if you wish, just start with a P1P, upgrade that with an enclosure kit. That pretty much makes it a P1S. Then add some AMS units and add three more if and when you want them. But the reason I'd probably recommend people start here is because if I don't have a specific reason to have the P1P, which would be a fine choice for a more technical user or perhaps somebody with a print farm, with this alone I'd have a neat, tidy and I think sexy machine that will sit pretty and print almost anything I could possibly throw at it. And unless you're printing proper engineering grade materials, in which case why are you watching my review, this is also the easy pick over the X1 Carbon 2. I want to say thanks for watching and a huge thanks goes out to our members whose names are up in lights now because they make it possible for us to keep making these videos. And it's just, it's that sort of encouragement that keeps me going because God, this takes a lot of time to do. But seriously, why not consider joining them? There should be a button below this video unless you're on iOS, in which case, yeah, they block it. So you'll have to have a look on a computer. But I want to thank you for watching. And if this was helpful in any way, just to give you an overview of why this might be a better option for you, maybe it's not the right option for you. And this video confirmed that. Whatever it did for you, please drop a like down below this video, ideally a comment to boost the algorithm. And if you can hit the subscribe and notification bell, that'd be brilliant. You know what? You know how it works. Just you do you. I'd love it if you could. You don't have to, but it'd be really great if you did. Until next time, rubber baby buggy bumpers. Bohammer out.